cranial nerve 3, the oculomotor nerve, is the most important nerve as far as eye movement. If you knock that out, you knock out most of the eye muscles. In fact, you don't need to remember what muscles cranial nerve 3 innervates, just remember what it doesn't innervate. And it doesn't innervate the lateral rectus, because that's the abducens nerve, that's number 6. And it doesn't innervate that crazy superior oblique muscle with its pulley. So everything else it innervates. Um, it also innervates the uh, levator muscle. And the levator muscle is that muscle that's responsible for keeping the eyelid up. So if you have a cranial nerve palsy, what you'll see is that little bit droopy. You'll have some ptosis. The eye will be somewhat outwards because cranial nerve 6 is still pulling it out. And it'll be somewhat downwards because cranial nerve 4, that superior oblique muscle, is kind of yanking the back of the eye uh, so that the eye goes down. So you have an eye that's down and out. Down and out is cranial nerve 3. You've got someone with ptosis, a down and out eye. That's a cranial nerve 3. And... Um, there's also pupil involvement sometimes, and I'll go over that in a second. So what causes a cranial nerve 3 palsy? Probably the biggest cause of all the palsies is some vasculitic process, either from diabetes, hypertension. Basically, you have a mini stroke of one of these cranial nerves, and the nerves go out. Um, for cranial nerve 3, you also need to think about aneurysm, and I'll talk about that uh, probably pretty soon. This is a, a computer simulation. Look at that right eye. It's somewhat down. So it went out, doesn't go up very well, doesn't go medial very well, goes down pretty good, and certainly goes out very well, and you can see our pupils dilated as well. So down and out is the key. So horizontal becomes maybe a little bit more apparent. So moving on. Um, so what is the importance of the pupil? Well, at this point, it may make more sense to look at the brain stem so we can understand how the cranial nerve 3 and really the other cranial nerves travel. Now, cranial nerve 3, uh, the nucleus for it, is up here in the midbrain. It's sort of under the uh, superior colliculus. It comes forward through the, uh, I guess it's the cerebral peduncle. It's been a little while since I looked at an atlas. But it basically comes forward in the front part of the midbrain, and it travels towards the cavernous sinus before entering the back of the eye socket. Now, the cranial nerve 3 is uh, somewhat special in the sense that it goes very close to the uh, circle of Willis, particularly where the posterior communicating uh, artery connects to the internal carotid. And at that site, that junction of the posterior communicating and the internal, uh, you can get aneurysms, and berry aneurysms are very common at this junction point. And if you have an aneurysm, it can push on this nerve, and it can cause a third nerve palsy. Now you can imagine that the distinction between an aneurysm or a tumor at this point versus just some type of mini stroke from diabetes or hypertension is a very big distinction that can't be missed. So, if we think of our cranial nerve 3 here, it's traveling from the brain and it's going towards the eye. Deep inside, all the cranial nerve, well really any nerve, is a vasculature. Nerves need a blood supply too if they're going to survive. And you can imagine that the vasculature in nerves is usually pretty deep. It's deep inside that nerve. And if you have high blood pressure or diabetes and it hits that nerve and it knocks it out, um, well it's going to hit it deep and usually gives you pretty substantial findings. However, the parasympathetics, and the parasympathetics are responsible for pupil constriction. So you see a bright light, your parasympathetics kick in, and it constricts your pupil. Those parasympathetics um, travel with the third nerve. And they have a tendency to run on the outside of the nerve. So they're very susceptible to compression. So if you have an aneurysm or a tumor pushing on that cranial nerve 3, then it very often will blow the pupil. The pupil will be involved. Um, while diabetes or hypertension is nice and deep inside the nerve will sometimes spare the parasympathetics. So pupil involvement is crucial to see, to document if you have a third nerve palsy. So the moral of the story, pupil involvement is bad. And you know, realistically, if you have a third nerve palsy really of any sort in this day and age, it probably makes sense to image because it's something you do not want to miss.